Hello everyone and welcome to the first of our CentOS mini tutorial series. Um, it's probably not going to be that mini and it's going to be going on for quite a while actually, um, but just random little tutorials. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you how you can install cPanel on CentOS. So this is going to be on CentOS 6.5, it will be on a virtual machine, um, so it's not so if you are going to do it, you need to make sure you either have a VPS license from somewhere like uh, buycpanel.com or you will need to um, have your own virtual machine and just use the test license which you get uh, when it's installed on an IP which hasn't been used before. Um, so let's just go into our forum and let's find the tutorial. So we actually have a cPanel forum. And there aren't many in it now, but more and more will be added to it. So we're just going to be going to how to install cPanel on CentOS. So it's quite simple, but um, it does require you actually... Well, it, it's quite an intense process because unless you have a decent internet connection, it's going to take you a while. Um, so let's just clear that. And... So the first thing you do when you install cPanel is you need to make sure there aren't any packages currently on the server which will annoy cPanel. Um, there are a few that it really doesn't like, so let's have a look at some of them. So if you've got any of these, you need to remove them or cPanel will break. So let's just do that now. So the way we can actually tell what's installed is by doing yum group list. And this will show you a list of all the packages installed. Um, so here you can see we have the web server, it doesn't like that. It doesn't like email server and that's about it really. But if you don't really know what you have and or you can't be bothered to actually do it, then you can just run this quick command here. Um, let's move that a bit further. And what this command here will do is it will just remove everything um, or every single one of these and delete it. So it doesn't matter if you don't have them all installed, it will only delete these ones and if there are any then it, it'll just do it. Um, so let's just go through and erase them. And the next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of the IP tables. We need to turn it off and make sure it doesn't start up again because IP tables might block certain ports that are needed with cPanel or it might open ones and make it a bit more insecure. Um, so let's just run that command and while we're doing that I'll explain what each of this does. So what this command here does is it turns off IP tables um, via the kernel and it will stop it starting up in future. This will stop the current version that's running um, or stop the service so we can make sure it's not running and then yum update will just update our packages and make sure that um, we are running the latest packages etc. So while we're doing that, I'm just going to pause this so you don't have to wait for me to download everything. So once all the packages have been updated, we can actually continue with the installation. So we're just going to make sure that Perl is installed. It probably already is. Yeah, it is. Um, but Perl is needed to actually run the installer. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to change to our home directory, download the latest version of the setup script, that is needed to install cPanel and then we're going to run that script so let's just go on with that and this is when everything's installed so it will take quite a while um, but don't worry about it it depends on your internet connection and how decent your server is so this is a virtual machine we're running uh, with two cores at 2.6 gigahertz with 2 gig RAM I think and um, so it's by no means the most powerful server out there it's quite poo but as I said in one of my previous videos this is only used for tutorials so it doesn't need to be very powerful and um, so while that's going and um, as I said it might take quite a while to do it it does have a decent internet connection but I'll just leave it to um, so in devices for a while so I'll pause the video and once everything's been installed we'll get on with everything. So once your install's finished um, you should see this kind of thing here and um, this will just tell you that if you go to your um, IP and then on the port 287 then it will allow you to administrate your server. Um, so let's just go to that now. Um, 
So I've opened it up now and you can see that there is an SSL issue and that's just because you go on the SSL port which doesn't have a certificate so don't worry about that. Um, you can't really set one up without going through this procedure anyway so don't worry about it. So if you click proceed anyway and then we should be able to log in using our root account. So root and then our password. And once you're in, you should see this page here. So this is just asking you if you want to accept the end user license, which we do because we want to use CPOL. And then let's have a look. Put my email address in there. Yeah, feel free to spam me, I don't mind. Um, we put our service host name, which is tutorials.studentvm.com. We can then choose our name servers, which we want to use to resolve domains. I'm just going to be using Google's, which is 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. .4. And then we can choose our main Ethernet ad adapter, which is VNet0 for this one, but it might be slightly different on your machine. And now what we can do is we can add separate IPs, but if we don't have additional IP addresses, then we can just leave it. Um, however, I'm just going to quickly add a couple for the sake of this tutorial, so if you just give it a sec, I'll do that now. Alright, so as you can see, I've just added um, a couple more IPs to it. This is just um, because they're going to be used for name servers. So skip this step and use default settings or go to step 4. So yeah, let's just go to step 4. And now we can you, uh, select which um, name servers we want to use or which program we want to use to handle name servers. So the default here is bind and there are a couple of advantages listed here and disadvantages etc and there's a couple of other programs. Um, unless you particularly have a preference on which package or if you've done the, this before and you know what you're doing then feel free to choose whichever other one you want um, but we're just going to be using bind. Okay and now we're going to be selecting our name servers for the server so it's chose ns1.studentvm, ns2.studentvm um, sure I'll use them, I've got no objections to that so let's just add them to and now we can just choose whether we want A entries to be added for all name servers and add a, an A entry for the host name so yeah sure might as well and once that's done it'll just go through and configure the name server and the next step we should actually be able to choose a couple of other things um, FTP is one of them, yep here we are so again you can use uh, pro FTPD or pure FTPD um, again the default one's this one so you might as well go with it unless you know which other one you want and same thing for mail self configuration which you can use in DevCorp it's up to you which one you use and Let's have a look. Yeah, we can just leave that ticked. I'm going to be sit disabling cPanel um, Hulk. You can enable it if you want. It's not as effective, but um, the reason I'm disabling it is because um, we had this set up for a college and one person forgot the password and couldn't get it on and they got the entire college network banned from the server. So, um, I just find it easier to disable it and I mean you can change settings but it's just easier to disable it and then I'm going to provide the modules to user bin um, pal formerly provided by check pal modules I'm just going to save that and continue and that will just set up the FTP server and the mail server to the settings we've provided and this next bit here this is interesting this is because um, there is a problem when you're running um, virtual machines on um, or CPanel on virtual machines, especially with OpenVZ, um, which is one we're using. Where unless you set second level quotas, it just will not let you use file system quotas. It'll just say it doesn't know how, or it says that the user's not used any disk space or anything like that. Um, if you're running this on a dedicated machine, go ahead and use it, it's great. If not, you might want to avoid it. But um, if your host pin provider can enable it for you, then that's great. Um, I can't remember whether I have enabled it for me. If not, I can go ahead and do that, and I'll show you how you can do that in another tutorial. So we're just going to finish this setup wizard, 
and then this is just going to enable everything we've said. Okay, so we're nearly finished, and now we've got a couple of other features we can and cannot disable or enable. It's up to you, really. Um, so, app config enhancement, yeah, sure. Um, log archive by default, might as well. Save usage analysis, yeah, we're gonna because might as well help the rest of um, the other people use it as well. Okay, so now we have some of the new features that you may or may not want to enable. So email archiving, um, it allows you to store a copy of each of the emails on the server which it sends or receives. This feature provides cPanel interface that allows users to control and archive type blah 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 blah. I'm going to enable that because it's on call. Um, auto discovery, I'm going to disable, it's not the kind of thing I want. Query Apache for nobody senders, I'd recommend enabling this. Um, but as it says, um, it might not work basically. Um, same thing for SMTP restrictions, just go ahead and enable that. And same thing for um, this bit here. So again, if, if you're not entirely sure, you might want to give it a read and give it a bit of Google about what everything is. But these are the settings I've been using and everything seems to be working fine. So it's good for what I need it for. So it's just going to go and save all the settings and update everything. And once we've done that, we should have our um, cPanel installation complete. So as you can see here, it says trial license. And by default, if you are installing this on an IP address which has never used cPanel before, it should automatically give you a trial license. If you do not have a trial license, feel free to use the link in the description below and it will take you to a place where you can actually buy your own VPS license or dedicated server license. Um, you don't have to use that link but if you do it means I get a little bit of a kickback which you probably won't ever reach because nobody will buy it but don't worry about it. Um, and you can actually go ahead and get the license again or get an updated version of the license. So the way we can do that is if we scroll down to the bottom of this guide, um, there should actually be a maybe there isn't. That's interesting. Hmm. Um, there is actually a way of getting a new license. Let me just see if I can find it here. You no, know it isn't. So let me just um, give it a sec. Right, I'm back. Um, so if for any reason you don't have a license or you've um, gone and changed IPs or you've installed it and it's just not got the right license anyway you can actually run the script in the users folder uh, which is slash user slash local slash cpanel slash cpk uh, clt and if you just run that it should go and grab the latest license for you so I'll make sure to update that in the tutorial and um, thank you very much for watching I hope you found this interesting uh, we're going to be going through a couple of the other stages which are included in the cPanel um, tutorial series. Uh, feel free to check them out if you want to create your own hosting environment. So thanks for watching and see you in some of my other videos. Bye guys.